It's the biggest question anybody could ever ask. Come on, man, think. Got a job. Got a job. <laughs> no, no, well, actually, the biggest question somebody can ask is what happens when you die. What do you think happens when somebody dies? <laughs> when you die, they go to heaven. Oh, what the fire you either, you either spend eternity in heaven or... You say heaven or hell. How about you? How about you? What's your name? You now, what's your, what's your name? Destiny. Destiny? What's your name? Uh, what do you think happens? What's your opinion? You don't know? How about you in the blue? <laughs> don't know either? Fancy fingernails don't know. All right. How about you? What's the question? That's short-term memory, man. Um, what do you think happens when somebody dies? They think about it deeply. <laughs> when they eat the pain, they die. And they are so He doesn't know either. All right. So how about how about you? Come on. Don't don't be afraid. We got a heaven or hell. Don't know. Don't know. Um, some, somewhat don't know, just thinking really hard about it. That's good though, at least you're thinking. Uh, afterlife. Like, afterlife. Yeah, like an animal. Like an animal. So you, when you die, you come back to something. Maybe, 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 like, maybe like maybe like a bug or a king, somewhere in between, something like that. Yeah. How about you, man in yellow? What do you think happens? You don't know. You ain't even trying to find out. Well, you know, we actually we need to think about it because. Have you guys ever known somebody to die really young? I mean, like, early teens, really young? Do you think they woke up that morning and said, Hey, you know what? Today's going to die. I guess I better get stuff straight. See, I just, I just moved from Alaska. We had a guy who was going to graduate last year. He was out driving day before graduation, wrecked his car, died instantly. He didn't think anything was going to happen. He thought he was going to live forever because of his age. How old are you guys? Who's the oldest here? How old are you? About to turn 16. About to turn 16? Ooh, man. Getting on the road soon. Who's the youngest? Thirteen. How old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen? So 13 to 16. How long, how much of your life do you think you guys have left? Well, I mean, it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. You're right. You know, you could have, you could have 80 years, 93, 96. You can have a good amount of time left. Or, you could have 80 seconds. I don't know. Things have happened to people and they've died instantly. Perfectly healthy. Remember, you know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know, really, really healthy guy, always working out. Used to be Mr. Huge Muscles, couldn't even bend his arms, his muscles were so big. He wound up going to the hospital because he had a heart condition. He didn't know about it. So what did that help? So the question is, are you guys ready to find out what happens when you die? I can help you answer that question by asking you a couple more. You ready? Would you consider yourself to be a good person? You guys think you're good people? Good? You're not nodding your head. You think kind of think it's a trick question? What's that? You think you're a good person? About to turn 16? Think you're good? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. There's a way you can find out. You want to you know how you can find out? Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and we're going to see if, if you measure up to being good. Have any of you ever told a lie? Mm, yeah. What do you call someone who tells a lie? A liar. All right. <laughs> Boom, he answered quick. Did you hear that? How about, have you ever stolen anything? Even if it was small, it could be a pen or a thousand dollars. Yeah, I stole a pen from my Oh, who stole it? From who? It was a while. It was like three pen. You stole a pen as a like freak year old? Yeah. Oh, wow. That was a long time ago. Tighten my backpack. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with you. What do you, uh, what do you call somebody when they steal something? A thief. A thief. That's right. You would only call them a stealer if they played football for Pittsburgh, right? Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. Now, I know I know y'all are kind of young, and this, this may be kind of a hard question for you, um, but you know what the seventh commandment of the Ten Commandments is? You shall not commit adultery. Have you ever done that? Shall not what? Commit adultery. Have you ever done that? Well, listen to this. This is what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. He says, if you ever look at someone with lust, then you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. Have any of you ever done that? Have you ever looked at somebody with lust, maybe on a TV, on a street, in a magazine? Have you ever done that? 
Well, Jesus says, if you've done that, then that's adultery of the heart. It's breaking the seventh commandment. Now, I ask you one more question. Have you, have your parents ever had to tell you to do something more than once? No. You know, that's the fifth commandment. That's dishonoring your parents. Even if you disobey them one time, you dishonor them because you're not doing what they've told you to do. So I'm just asking you guys four questions to see if you're good people. What you've told me is some of you said you're lying, you're liars. Not, this is, I'm not saying I'm telling you this. You've admitted to being liars, being thieves, being adulterers of the heart, and dishonoring your parents. Now let me ask you, you think that sounds like a good person? So if I were to introduce you to a friend of mine and I said, uh, hey, this is my friend Destiny, and she's a, uh, a lying, thieving, adulterer at heart. Do you think they'd want to hang out with you? Probably not. What's that? Well, you never. Yeah, you're right. They may be. They may. They may be just as bad. You never know. But it doesn't really sound like the kind of people you want to be around. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die once. Not to judge God says there is no reincarnation. This is it. This is all the life we get. We may have 13 years of it. We may have 103 years of it. But this is it. So when you die, God judges you by His standard. And His standard of goodness is absolute perfection. Do you think He's going to find you innocent or guilty? Do you think He's going to find you innocent or guilty? Guilty? Innocent or guilty? Do you think He's going to find you innocent or guilty? He's listening. I know He's listening. Guilty? Guilty? Anybody think you're going to be innocent? Well, God is a God does forgive, but the Bible also says God is a righteous and just judge. He judges people by His standard. Let me ask you: um, If somebody broke into your house and stole all your things, and then you wound up in court testifying against that person, and the judge said to the person who stole it, hey, "You know what? You stole all that stuff from Destiny's house, but you know what? I forgive you. You can go free." Are you gonna Are you gonna be happy at that judge? No, you're gonna be mad because he didn't uphold the law. God says he upholds his law also, and we have his moral law revealed in the Ten Commandments. So God does forgive, but God's also a just judge. He judges by his standards. When we die, if we violated any of God's law, even one time, he says we will be guilty. And if we're guilty, do you think God should send you to heaven or hell? Hell? Anybody think because you're guilty, God should send you to heaven just for the fun of it? You know what hell's like? Have you ever... Don't want to know. No? Don't want to know? Well, we, we know what it's like when we read the Bible. The Bible tells us it's a place of outer darkness. Absolute, total darkness. But it's a place where there's fire that never stops burning. Now imagine a fire that doesn't put off any light. It's completely dark. And it's absolute pain. You ever burned your hand on a stove? Something like that? You know how bad that felt? Imagine that kind of pain multiplied a million times and never stops. It says it's also a place where the worm never stops turning. That means there's constant eternal anguish. It's constantly in pain. And every single one of us, me included, deserve that place because of how we've sinned against God. Even if we've lied just one time, we've sinned against God, and that's what we deserve. The Bible says that God is perfect and holy. He can't allow guilty people or people who violate His law or sin into His presence. Does it concern you that when you guys die, you're going to go to hell? Does that concern you? Anybody? Does that concern anyone? Yeah? It really should. It really, really should. That's the bad news. But you know what the good news is? Anybody know what the good news is? You can change your life. Well, the Bible says you can't change yourself at all. As a matter of fact, in the book of Romans, it says there is no one who does good. Nobody. No, not one. No one seeks after God. You can try to change yourself, and let's say that from this point on, you never sin again the rest of your life. You still have all those past sins you have to pay for. Imagine a thief says, I know I stole a million dollars, but that was two years ago. I'm not going to do it anymore. He's still got to pay for the penalty that he incurred two years ago. You can try to change your life, but it's still not going to help. There's a fine you have to pay.